Welcome to Aztec University, an education program offering continued learning on topics from Microsoft Dynamics to other technology solutions. This video will cover a few minutes of tips and tricks for Microsoft Dynamics GP cash flow management tool. If you're using the cash flow management tool, there are a couple of things that do need to be set up or that can be beneficial as far as setting up to be able to utilize the cash flow management explorer and calendar. To do so, you need to set up at least one forecast ID that's going to be used for your cash flow environment. To be able to go in and set up that cash flow forecast, we need to go to either, again, if you're using a prior version, we can go to Tools, Setup, Financial, and then we can go to Cash Flow Forecast. Or again, from the Financial page, we can scroll down to Setup and select Cash Flow Forecast. From here, you'll notice that we can give it a forecast ID. You'll notice it is the only required field that is necessary. From here, though, we can call this forecast whatever we want, again, as long as we keep it within our standardized 15-character limitation of most of the master records within Dynamics GP. So you notice I actually have several of them out here. If I wanted to create a new one, I can just call it default. And then once I actually set up the default cash flow forecast, I actually have several different areas that I can go in and set up configurations for. You'll see that I can do it for the financial module, financial module being not the general ledger, but actually dealing with your bank reconciliation module. And then we also have the sales, purchasing, and then general components as well. So as far as going through and setting this up, under the opening balances, you can force it to have a certain opening balance, or you can have it being the balance of a certain GL account. So, for example, if I wanted to have it, my opening balances to include, even though I don't really have it as being a checkbook, I wanted to include my cash suspense account. Or I also want to make sure, because let's say that I know it's off by about $130,000, I can manually go in and say, make sure that the opening balances are going to be consistent. So this is a good way that if you need to make sure your balances are going to be tied together, that's how you can do so. Once I've done that, under the Include Checkbooks ID, I can selectively decide which checkbooks I want to include as being part of that opening balance as of on a month-to-month -month basis. If I want to include all, I can simply check the box to include all. If I have bank deposits that may be saved and not yet processed, I want to make sure to include or mark the checkbox to include work adjustment transactions. So that's more typically, and if you think about as far as bank rec transactions, the majority of them, you typically just post them on a transaction by transaction basis. There's really no place for you to be able to go in and actually save those transactions with the exception of bank deposits. So that's why, as far as if they're sitting out there and they have not been processed or post, posted yet in your bank rec module, you want to make sure to include it in your balances by marking the checkbox. From there, under sales, you can tell it to include receivables, both open or unposted transactions. And if you want to include sales order, orders and invoices, that is also how you can go in as far as unposted sales order, invoices, or orders. Again, you can mark the box to tell it to include your sales order documents. And then from here, telling it to forecast using the customers, you can either tell it to use the due date off of the invoice or the sales document, or you could tell it to use the average days. If you tell it to use the average days, what it's going to do when you're actually looking at your cash flow forecast is it will go through and off of your customer's records, so if I pull up a customer, what it's going to look at is it's going to look at the average days to pay on that year-to-date information and use that to project as far as when that cash will actually come into the office and when you can rely on having that cash in the bank. So you can actually pick and choose. So you know that you know the customer might actually have a due date of net 15, but they don't tend to pay until like net 40. Then that's where you want to get a more accurate flow of when that cash is going to be coming in. It's almost better off to using as far as average days. 
From a payable side, again, just like receivables, you can tell it to view both open AP transactions as well as unposted AP transactions. And if you're using the PO module and you want to look at upcoming expenses that you have to deal with, you can also tell it to use purchase order processing documents. So allow you to look at all those requisitions that are sitting out there that you know that you're going to also have to pay at some point. And then lastly, you also have the ability under the General tab to be able to create cash flow or include cash flow transactions. These are transactions that are more or less when you want to have what-if transactions that are not typically incorporated in either sales or purchasing so for an example would be payroll. It's a prime example that payroll might be outsourced. So we typically do a journal entry. Well, when you're looking at that cash flow forecast in the actual calendar or an explorer, it doesn't read information from the general ledger. The only time it would read anything is when you actually have a single GL account that shows up again as being an opening balance. So anything related to payroll is where you can go in and create cash flow transactions. So here's an example where I have certain very specific dates that I know I've got payroll with commissions, payroll with no commissions. And you'll notice that if you need to show it as being an outgoing expense versus an incoming expense, all you need to do is actually either put a negative sign in that balance. So again, let's say that I'm now in July, which Typically, you probably would not have that much transaction set up into the system going forward because you're not really going to know what your payroll with commissions is going to be or with no commissions because it's going to typically, especially if you have hourly employees, it might change on an ongoing basis. But this is now if I want to make this an outgoing payment, I can simply just put a negative sign type in what the balance is going to be, tab out of there, and it now makes it a negative. So you can, on an ongoing basis, add the different transactions, and the only time that you're going to see those values is based on the date that you entered in for that cash flow transaction. When I select OK, it's now going to be available. Now, one note that you need to be aware of as far as when you mark that box is that by default, by default that or those cash flow transactions will show up on every forecast that you've created. So if you only want it to show up on one of them, so if I go in and let's say I save this, you'll see that I actually have several of them out there. I have one for collections. I don't have it marked. So regardless of the transactions I have in my cash flow transaction list, they will not be a part of my forecast because I have not marked that box. Same thing if I go to my next one, as we just went in and set up with my forecast or my default one, it will be part of my cash flow balance. I have another one out there called original forecast with customer average days. Again, payroll and all those transactions will be included. Same thing with payr. But then my original cash flow, I'm like, just show me everything without payroll. And you'll notice again, that's what's going to show me because I don't have that checkbox. So before you start using your cash flow calendar, or your cash flow explorer that's available under the inquiry menu, make sure that you set up at least one forecast ID that you're going to be using. As always, thank you for watching Aztec University Tips and Tricks. For more information on Aztec University and upcoming topics, visit Aztec YouTube channel or go to www.aztecsystems.com slash au. Mm -hmm.